Well, hi, guys. Well, I guess it is officially winter time here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm, where we had more than frost on the pumpkin, we had snow on the log pile this morning, which is my key to start packing my gas-sucking truck. I am out of here in two days on Friday, but it is Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. So I've been trying to decide which of these short essays to read for today's Chronicle of the Collapse. So I'm just going to make two quickies, two quickies for today. We're going to have two chronicles. We're going to start out with this, this woman. I, I check in with Caitlin Johnstone. I don't know, maybe once a month, Caitlin, uh, the little lefty Caitlin, <clears throat> talks about something of interest to doomers. Well, Caitlin is coming out sounding like a real doomer chick. We actually have the word doom in her headline. Take it away, Caitlin Johnstone. It's really weird how little we talk about humanity's imminent doom. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> Did you know the insects are vanishing? Yes, we at Collapse Chronicles do know that. They are. Land-dwelling insects like butterflies, ants, and grasshoppers are now half as common as they were 25 years ago. That's why those of you who remembered catching fireflies on summer nights as kids don't see them much anymore. Well, unless you live here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, no shortage of fireflies. That is one bug at Bugs in a Jar. Uh, the fireflies in a jar could light up uh, the sky. Yes, and why car windshields do not get covered in dead bugs like they used to. That is very true. I've been noticing this myself the last 20 years. Uh, the, wind, the windshield splatter quotient completely disappeared, at least driving around Florida. <clears throat> this, meaning the insect apocalypse, is a part of the animal kingdom that the rest of the ecosystem is built upon, <clears throat> and it has undergone a drastic plummet that we have personally witnessed in our lifetimes. <clears throat> If you were a sapient insect watching it happen, you would not be thinking in terms of a future Armageddon. You would feel you were currently witnessing it. <clears throat> People bicker and argue about global warming and what should be done about it and if it even exists. But climate change, thank you, Caitlin, sounding like book hermit, <clears throat> Climate change is only one of the many ways our biosphere is moving toward death. There has also been a shocking loss of two-thirds of Earth's wildlife in the last 50 years, ecosystems dying off, forests disappearing, soil becoming rapidly less fertile, mass extinctions, oceans gasping for oxygen and becoming lifeless deserts, while continents of plastic form in their waters, and the aforementioned insect apocalypse. <clears throat> the way the debate fixates solely on temperature and carbon levels is like if someone had stage four cancer throughout their body and they were in a coma and their vital signs were dropping and the doctor said death is imminent and everyone was stuck on arguing over whether or not low blood pressure is necessarily a bad thing. I think that's a pretty good uh, pretty good description on our fixation on, uh, on climate change, uh, which, which is, you know, one of the nine planetary boundaries. Nobody <clears throat> talking about the other eight planetary boundaries that are going to hell in a handbasket. One hundred, I'll, 
well, 99% of the news is on one planetary boundary is basically what Caitlin and Book Hermit and I have been saying. If climate change was nowhere on the menu, the planet is doomed. There's nine ways to kill a planet. Climate change, one of the nine. Okay, I think we understand your point, Caitlin. Moving on. <clears throat> and nothing is being done about global warming anyway. Conspiracy types have been claiming for decades that it's a hoax designed to advance this or that agenda. And during that time, the only thing that has advanced is the temperature of the planet and the ecocidal capitalist system responsible for it. The 2021 UN Climate Change Conference has seen world leaders issue a non-binding pledge to achieve carbon neutrality by or around mid-century while taking naps and tossing coins into Rome's Trevi Fountain for luck in addressing the issue they could all solve quickly if they wanted to. <clears throat> Carbon neutrality is itself a highly misleading and potentially completely worthless neoliberal sham designed to allow the continuation <coughs> of carbon output, but attempting to fix it with more consumption, <clears throat> which is what it is. <clears throat> Meanwhile, methane, all right. Meanwhile, methane, a far more potent greenhouse gas than carbon in the short term, has started hemorrhaging into the atmosphere from thawing Arctic permafrost and no one knows what to do about it. This, like the albedo effect of polar ice loss and numerous other self-reinforcing warming effects <clears throat> that have been unblocking in recent years, can potentially cause the Earth to continue warming all on its own, regardless of future human behavior. So, Caitlin Johnstone, you got to remember, I, I mean, she's not just, you know, the doomosphere is just like a sideline of hers. And even just being a sideline, Caitlin gets it. Uh, gets it more than a lot of doomers do. Uh, all of this crap, uh, the, 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 these climate talks and everything reducing, it makes no difference. The planet is doomed. Uh, now let them enjoy their little hopium-soaked dog and pony shows. Okay, so much for methane. That is all on top of the Western Empire ramping up world-threatening aggressions against both nuclear-armed Russia and nuclear-armed China simultaneously, a multi-front Cold War the likes of which we have never seen before, and which is only just barely getting started. And if we don't wipe ourselves out by climate change or nuclear war, <clears throat> we could still <clears throat> easily do it fairly soon with weaponized AI. <clears throat> So, our species is facing existential threats on myriad fronts, which could easily lead to horrifying extinction-level events that we could easily see unfold in our own lifetimes. And it's just so very strange how we don't talk about that more. It's like if you knew you had a deadly but treatable disease, and not only did you not pursue treatment, you also didn't think about it much and didn't talk about it with anyone. None of your friends ever bring it up. 
the way we're just sitting around going about our lives like this isn't happening like this isn't happening reminds me of that experiment where participants sit in a waiting room that's filling up with smoke without knowing that the experiment is already underway. If the participants are alone, they will generally take action to do something about the problem. But if they're in the waiting room with other people who are secretly in on the experiment and have been told to ignore the smoke, the participant will also ignore it. The smoke machine can be billowing into the waiting room at levels that would have killed everyone in it if it were real smoke, and they still remain inactive. We are all kind of doing that right now with humanity's impending doom. Nobody else seems to be worried about it, so why should we be worried about it? If it were a big deal, then surely the news would be talking about it, and surely our leaders would be doing more about it. It's the bystander effect in action on a worldwide scale. It's what Bo Bunham, whoever that is, calls that funny feeling. That peculiar experience of watching the smoke pouring into the room while no one does anything, of knowing we are hurtling toward our destruction while the media runs headlines like Elijah Wood touted a newly acquired NFT. I have no idea what an NFT is, never heard that in my entire life. Elijah Wood touted a new acquired NFT, a racism scandal ensued. A funny feeling indeed. Now we have a little bit of hopium, of course. Uh, even uh, even uh, Caitlin has to come up with the hopium at the end. But of course it doesn't have to stay that way. We can help our species fight its way out of our waiting room stupor by taking action to spread awareness of the problems we face and the underlying causes. Since spreading awareness is the only thing that even makes any real difference in such matters anyway. Thank you, Caitlin, for uh, uh, approving the existence of Collapse Chronicles, which is simply all I'm doing here, guys, is having this conversation, spreading awareness for the 0.001% uh, of the planet who has any interest in the single biggest story in the history of the human species unfolding before our eyes every day of the year. Thank you, Caitlin, for uh, giving me a pat on the back. <clears throat> All right. Whether we are on our way to our doom or not, and whether struggle is futile or not, working to help as a gratuitous act of love is still the sanest possible response to this glorious mess. Even if we are all doomed, and our fate is already sealed, it doesn't have to be all bad. There you go, Caitlin. Even if we are all doomed, and our fate is already sealed, it does not have to be all bad. <laughs> Some people with terminal diagnoses will tell you they have been living more in their last few months of life than in all their preceding decades combined. The fact that this, meaning this, could all end at any time is all the more reason to treasure it with all our hearts, to become big enough to let its beauty and majesty in so we can really appreciate it and enjoy it while we still can. Well, 
I added that last bit, but I think it was implied is what she's talking about is enjoy it while you still can cause this whole shit show can come crashing down any day. <clears throat> to behold this miraculous place with eyes full of wonder, to pursue spiritual enlightenment, and then laugh to the heavens when we realize it is already here. If you do not succumb to doomerism, there you go, <laughs> succumbing to doomerism, if you do not succumb to doomerism and defeatism and really embrace this moment in history for what it is, this is the best possible time for a human to be alive. <laughs> there you go. There's some hopium uh, to wind up. Uh, yes, this is the best possible moment for a human to be alive. Uh-huh. If you don't succumb to doomerism, but thank you, uh, Sister Caitlin, and we're going to go from Caitlin, and we're going to go, uh, we were quoting all of these uh, old farts who were, uh, in, you know, at the COP26. So I'm going to come back and do a quick uh, note from an old fart who was not invited to COP26. Very proud of that fact that he was not invited to COP26 and that is the 102 year old, 102 years old, uh, James Lovelock, what he has to say about the matter from the sidelines of COP26. Coming right up. We got one more short one little dog. Yes, no, we're not, we're not finished yet. <laughs>